koi are thought of as an art form, a living art form. In fact, they call them living jewels in that they sparkle in the water as they swim. And the idea is to get different combinations of colors that are attractive to the eye. In the 19th century, the raising of koi was the exclusive hobby of Japanese nobility. Today, America's finest city has become a mecca for the keeping of these living jewels. Our ideal climate in proximity to the Pacific Rim have certainly contributed to the phenomenon of over 5,000 koi keepers in San Diego County. But it's the passion of a handful of motivated hobbyists that have really put us on the koi map. I'm a collector. I like to collect things, and I like to get one of everything, and, and the difference is what appeals to me. Every year, there seems to be a new favorite category coming out. Uh, so it's kind of an in vogue thing to get the new one. The color's all on their back, so uh, when we take them to shows, they're actually judged by looking down upon them. My favorite show is our show, <laughs> Koi Club of San Diego, which is generally President's Weekend at Del Mar Fairgrounds, and it's now become the largest in the U.S., and we like to think the most prestigious. So we have people from all over come, and we always get our judges from uh, around the country and also Japan. Here in the U.S., I think the most I've ever heard paid for a koi in the U.S. was 70000 That's a lot of money for something that can roll over and die. Here we take pride, for instance, in our club, of having people that don't buy expensive koi at all. They may spend just a couple dollars for a few small koi, and they name their fish different names, uh, and it's like a pet. So you look for one, ideally when you buy one, for a small amount of money that would develop into a huge fish that would be great quality. And that's, a, that's an art form in itself. And it's that art of picking winners that is behind one of San Diego's most successful koi entrepreneurs. From building ponds to pond maintenance and disease diagnosis, James Van Jan has turned a hobby, along with much of the interior and exterior of his North County home, into koi land. This is our quarantine tank. This is where we bring the new fish in from Japan and keep them separate from all the other tanks and fish for at least a month while we treat them for potential parasites and diseases. It's often a 24-hour-a-day job when I have to be on call for emergencies at any time. When you consider that some people have $100,000 worth of fish in their pond, if there's emergencies where a pump breaks down or a fish gets sick, um, I can have to go at any time to do my best to keep the fish alive. This is actually my favorite part of the business, which is the fish. The most popular fish in the world here is kohaku, the, the red and white fish. If I was advising a, a, a client on which fish was preferable to buy, they would normally like this fish, but I would suggest a fish like this. Uh, this color orange usually becomes a much stronger red as the fish grows. This color red usually weakens as the fish grows and usually picks up more black. Uh, little imperfections in it. What makes it really interesting is trying to predict what each particular fish will do in our climate and in our pH and hardness of water. One of the things I try to make an art of is uh, picking fish that won't do well in Japan that I can buy at a more reasonable rate that when they are brought to San Diego really blossom and become really beautiful. We're looking for 225 for this fish as a steel. The he shows to be excellent he, nice three steps of red on it. The sumi has got a ways to go. It can develop for another two years as the fish grows. We have a bit of 250, 250 now. But the black on this fish has still quite a ways to develop. To Steve Drake, one of San Diego's foremost experts on koi, there's more to the keeping of the world's most colorful fish than their monetary value. People say that koi are living art, and they truly are. We select koi like we select paintings. But it's not just the koi, it's the landscape around it, the palms, the banana trees, the ferns, and other plants. Really, you're focused on a picture. The koi themselves are art, and the environment around it frames the art. 
Watching fish is a fascinating uh, pastime. It's a, just a soothing activity at the end of the day and the beginning of the day that uh, no matter what's on your mind, if you just watch your fish, your mind goes uh, um, only to that. For me, the, the, the favorite koi is, is one that uh, um, is a very tranquil animal. My favorite fish is this big key, this big yellow fish. I bought him when he was about three inches long, and uh, as you can see now, he's getting close to about uh, 28 inches. Um, this fish is so healthy, so tame. Look at, look at this. It just will allow you to touch him, no problem. The fins on that fish are so pretty to me. They're just the perfect shape for a koi. It's a very elegant fish. I'm actually a lucky person to live here in San Diego with the resources available because it really allows me to participate at the highest level of the hobby.